Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 24th and right now we are looking at the infrared slash visible satellite imagery. You can see the sun rising across the lower 48 out over the Pacific Ocean. Low pressure center continues to weaken, but as you can see it is meandering and spinning off our coastline. It's going to throw a couple more impulses here as we go through the day tomorrow. Associated frontal system continues to move across the area and push off to the northeast. And then we're going to turn things more out of a southwesterly flow, a bit warmer, subtropical moisture, atmospheric river potential. Potential. We're going to dive into those details as we go through the video this morning. Taking a look at the Doppler radar overlay, and you can see that frontal system has moved across the area, and you can kind of see the showery activity behind this and low pressure center off the coastline here. It's going to keep this rain going as we go through the day tomorrow. Then that next system will arrive on the day Friday. Taking a look at some of the wind gusts here, check it out. I-5, I think this is Rice Hill, it is, 49 miles per hour, not bad. And you can see Onion Mountain Lookout there, 47. A little blustery on the Oregon coast as well. Destruction Island at 47. Huckleberry Ridge at 56 miles per hour. Impressive gusts there. You know, not a major windstorm out here, but some gusty conditions for some areas. Discovery Island gusting 52. Windby Island probably gusting into the 30s as we speak right now. And some gusty winds across the northwest interior. Now looking at the European. So this is last night's run. You can see that frontal system that moves through the day today. Showery weather continues on and through tonight. Another impulse tomorrow morning keeps the rain going across a lot of western Oregon, Washington, and BC. And then this next system arrives out of the southwest. Maybe we'll get a little bit of a break here during the day Friday no promises. You know, sun breaks can be hard to come by this time of year across the region. Next system rolls through here as we go on in through Saturday and we keep that southwest flow going. Deep low pressure probably moving up at some point on late Sunday night into early Monday morning. Atmospheric river potential associated and we've got multiple systems out of the southwest going to be rolling through the area as we go through it next week as well. Now, looking at Kuliut Airport here, you can see gusting, what, 51 miles per hour in the latest, and this would probably be early on Monday morning. If we go down the Washington coast, a little bit less of a signal there. So not a region-wide windstorm by any stretch of the imagination. Now looking at the GFS, so we're looking at integrated vapor transport and you base atmospheric rivers on the strength of this flow versus the duration. So you can see our low pressure center there spreading its impulses across us for the next couple of days. And we start to bring that southwest flow. Subtropical moisture continues to move up over the area and you can kind of see these deep lows just spreading that moisture into the region just nonstop as we head on in through next week. We'd be looking at about Tuesday afternoon and next week and look at that deep low and just this huge fetch moisture. That's why they call it the Pineapple Express all the way from Hawaii. You can smell the pina coladas across Vancouver Island there. And that just continues on as we go on in through the midweek period before that finally comes to an end at some point, probably on Thursday. And then maybe we'll get a cooler trough through the extended. No promises just yet. We'll worry about that in upcoming days. This is looking at maximum forecast atmospheric river scale, the European model. And you can see actually some pretty widespread AR4 here along some of the coastal areas. And we'll go into some of the details on this atmospheric river here in a moment. So stand by just actually we'll go into it right now because this is November 1990. And I want to show you some of the differences between some of the high impact atmospheric rivers across the Cascades versus Vancouver Island in southwest BC. As you can see, those mountain ranges here are aligned differently. So you need more of a west southwest flow into the Cascades of Oregon, Washington to bring the really big impacts and the really big flooding events versus Vancouver Island, as you can see. See the uh, way the mountains are aligned a little bit more here from northwest to southeast. And as you get that southerly flow, you're really going to be targeting some of southwest BC and Vancouver Island versus the Washington, Oregon Cascades. So this was back in 1990, very severe flooding back in November of 1990 across western Washington. And you can see why, because we had that flow kind of out of the west southwest. And this shows the winds at 500, uh, actually 5,000 feet, 850 millibars. Again, more out of the west southwest. That's why it really impacted some of the Cascades. However, this next event, we're going to be considering consistently out of the south southwest here. So it's really going to be targeting some of Vancouver Island and some of southwest BC. So even if this pushes a little bit further to the east, it's still not going to be one of those high end atmospheric river flooding events for the Washington and the Oregon Cascades. Definitely higher potential for that across Vancouver Island and southwest BC. Hopefully that makes sense. And you can see that flooding back in November 21st of the 26th, 1990 has its own natural disaster survey report. Go ahead, Google that and read that if you want some 
reading on a very intense uh, you know, set of storms here into the Pacific Northwest. And looking at snow depth in inches, another problem with the atmospheric rivers, of course, is that they bring that southwest warm flow here, and they're not great snowmakers, not good for the snowpack here in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because you can see we're going the wrong way. Check it out. The snowpack is going the wrong way here across some of the Pacific Northwest. And hopefully we can bring that cooler trough as we go through early February to start to rebuild that. Because look at Vancouver Island. It loses a lot of its snowpack, even western BC and a lot of the Cascades of Washington, Oregon. You can kind of see it shrinking back there as we go on into the extended forecast. Typical for atmospheric river activity. Now looking at the National Blend of Models, I put this into motion. You know, you're going to get the gist of this here as we go through the extended because you can clearly see how Vancouver Island, some of the Olympic Mountains could be targeted here as well. Still some big rainfall amounts showing up for the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, but not the high end atmospheric fl river flooding events. Very unlikely with the trajectory of this flow. It is moving perpendicular into Vancouver Island and the higher terrain there and not into the Cascades of Washington, Oregon. However, the mountains are also aligned similarly across southwest B British Columbia as well. So there could be some pretty intense flooding associated with that now uh let me back up a bit here here let's go back and i'll show you the gfs here this is hot off the press of the 12z just going to scroll through this pretty quick and just kind of give you the general pattern here of what's coming because you can see some of these just huge amounts we're pegging the scale here across vancouver island up over 20 inches in some of the gfs kind of a widespread swath of it too across western bc vancouver island and even including the olympic mountains at times and if you look close you can even see the rain shadowing effect off to the northeast of the olympic mountains some of Whidbey island and some of the san juans here also as we scroll off into the extended forecast so yeah we have big time atmospheric river potential incoming here but you can see the trajectory really makes a big difference of the flow, especially about 5,000 feet. Now, anyway, looking at the European, this is last uh, yesterday afternoon's run, and you can see the similarities here as well, you know, kind of targeting Western BC and Vancouver Island. Uh, looking at six to 10 day, much of the USA above average here as we go through February 2nd and six to 10 day, clearly favoring the West there as well. And of course, we're gonna have our atmospheric river um, activity ongoing during that time frame. But anyway, looking at significant wave, I also want to show you guys this here really quick. You can see that low pressure center kind of spinning a little bit of bump in the wave activity here as we go through the day tomorrow, especially a little bit of a break here as we go through Saturday, but quickly start to increase some of this wave action as we go on into a very light Sunday night into Monday. And some of these low pressure centers will be keeping some of this wave activity increased here across the Pacific Northwest as we go on in towards the mid and later portion of next week. And I also wanted to show you this. You can look up the, uh, the Canadian drought monitor and with the, the record fire season across a lot of Canada there uh, last year, this is of concern. And a lot of times these atmospheric rivers do not help out with some of this interior portions here. A lot of those, uh, you know, the moisture gets wrung out here across western BC and it's not of much help. But yeah, uh, we'll be, I'll watch this and we'll kind of pay more attention to this as we go on in towards the spring and the summer months because you guys know the fire season, if you were paying attention across Canada last year, was record bad and hopefully... You know, I guess one of the upsides of burning that much material is you don't have that much mater material to burn again this round. But, you know, this drought is not good if you're considering fire this season into account. Um, and if you guys want a nice affordable home weather station, click on that link down below. It tells you when the rain starts. It's got a lightning detection system with it. What I wouldn't have given to have this uh, system on my home when I was a child. Great smartphone app also. But yeah, anyway, we'll continue to watch this. We have a couple days before this atmospheric river really starts to get ramped up here. But right now, I mean, that trajectory is just not favorable for the, just the huge flooding across the Washington, Oregon Cascades. So that's good. But Vancouver Island is really under the gun here and some portions of Southwest B and Western British Columbia as well. We'll watch that again closely tomorrow. And yeah, what else? I mean, hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.